Our client is a middle-aged female who has recently had surgery after being faced with a rotator cuff injury. This injury is common in many tennis players and correct rehabilitation is crucial. For more information on the following principles in our client profile, please see the information sheet provided. Visual and auditory learning are two of the most common ways in which individuals are educated and taught new skills. Visual learners receive best results when the skill is demonstrated to them and auditory learners see results when they are hearing and listening to the environment and the instructor about the execution of the skill. Whole practice refers to the continued practice of the whole skill, whereas part practice looks at breaking down the skill into components. Both part and whole practice are two ways in which performance can be significantly increased. Coordination and sequencing are crucial in any sport as it allows for smooth patterning and movement due to a combination of muscles acting together with appropriate intensity and timing. Variable practice is when one skill or task is repeated, however one aspect changes from one repetition to another. Variable practice is more beneficial than that of constant practice. There are many different types of feedback, including intrinsic and extrinsic feedback, such as knowledge of results and knowledge of performance. Proprioception can also be used in order to enhance skill acquisition. Random practice is a type of training option that can be taken to increase the amount of contextual interference. When the contextual interference is high in random organisation of practice, this means that trials involve performing a variety of tasks in one session rather than one task being the main and only focus for one session. The skill specificity principle suggests that the more physical or cognitive characteristics that skills and situations have in common, the greater amount of transfer of learning or performance. Transfer of learning refers to the ability to be able to transfer learned skills from a past experience or situation to a current environment to see optimum results. In this video, we are taking the client through the highlighted stages of our Gentiles taxonomy. Isometric contractions, which is a different type of exercise that I'm going to take you through. Um, now, what we're going to do to begin with, we're going to get you to put this just under your elbow, so it's just going to sit about here. Yep, just so that every time you do the exercise, yep, that's fine. Yep, just so every time you do the exercise, you're not changing the angle between your elbow and the side of your trunk. Mm -hmm. um, so, what we're going to do, we're going to do some isometric stuff. So, what that means is I'm going to get you to hold your arm at about, say, 50%, try to push against the pole, um, just to strengthen your uh, shoulder a little bit. Um, once you've done this one, we're going to do it for five seconds. So we'll do this one for five seconds, and then we're just going to shuffle you along a bit, and we're going to go back the other way for five seconds, and we're going to do five trials on each side. Sure. So first things first, so I'm just going to line you up. So if you just want to put your uh, elbow at a 90 degree angle for me, yep, with your wrist just on the thing. Now I'm just going to do this so that every time you do it, you're hitting the same spot every single time. Mm -hmm. Alright, so how does that feel? Do you feel alright with that in your arm? Yep. Alright, so if you want to put your... In this video, we focused on auditory and visual learning. So the instructor demonstrated as well as verbally told the patient how to do the skill. And we also look at whole and part practice. So this is where we've broken down the skill and we've just cut it back to do some isometric training to strengthen the muscles. Throughout the next couple of videos, we're just taking you through the next stages of our Gentiles taxonomy and showing how our patient is progressing. Army couldn't hold me back They're gonna rip it off Taking their time right behind my back And I'm talking to myself at night Because I can't forget Back and forth through my mind Behind a cigarette And a message coming from my eyes video it's going to be demonstrating how we took our subject through stage 2b of Gentiles taxonomy. We're going to take our training session just a little bit more advanced. The exercise that we did the other week where we were doing our hot face with no band, we're going to add the band into it now. So same things apply, nice straight wrist the whole time. Try and imagine that you're keeping space between your shoulder and your ear the whole time as well and then we'll avoid that little shift up. Mm -hmm. See how we go. Just do a few where you're going through your pop face yourself. Imagine the different numbers. Elbows going to leave, then open out, just like we did before. And then I'll start yelling out some clock numbers for you to hit. In this video, we're using a variety of principles, including visual and auditory learning, whole and part practice, proprioceptive feedback, and a bit of variable practice also where the instructor is saying numbers and the athlete has to respond to these numbers correctly. Just going to cut the
Okay, I think we're probably ready to have a go at yelling out a few little yep. numbers. So if we think 12 is up and we're heading down towards 6 o'clock. Yep. So let's go for a 3 o'clock first. In this video we have also started to include random practice where there is more contextual interference which makes it harder for the individual to complete the task without errors. In the next few videos, we are just taking the subject through our other stages of Gentile's taxonomy. Again, we're still using the principles as listed before. And we're also starting to incorporate some specificity into the training. In the following video, it's going to demonstrate how we took our subject through step 3C of Gentile's Taxonomy. Into more sport specific type training. Obviously, with the total tennis ball, it's going to start feeling a little bit more realistic, which is good. Um, I also want to say a little bit of weight transfer through your body. Yep. So, just movement really through the legs will get that going um, because that's going to make it feel more game like as well. Yep. So get you back into these patterns. So, then when we finish the rehab, you can go out and feel confident in your next slot of training. Yep. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to release the ball from this side yep. and I want you to strike the ball mainly focusing on accuracy, yep. not, necessarily, not necessarily speed. So we'll do five forehands and then I'll um, get it back and we'll work on five back. Yep. Okay. So I'll just show you yep. as well. So all I'm going to do is release the ball from this side and I want to strike the forehand. Yep, so just like that. Yep, yep. So, and did you want me to hit the ball or? No, no, I'll just get you to stand off for the yep. minute, but just doing exactly how you will be again. Yep. Okay? Yep. No worries. So we'll just do one well, practice one and then we'll go for our five forehead tasks and then five back. No problem. Yep, perfect. Yep, just like that. Okay, here we go. In this video we have continued to use the previously listed principles as well as focusing on skill specificity predominantly. We've also incorporated auditory feedback as well as looking at sequencing and coordination and speed versus accuracy. In the following videos, we're just taking our athlete through the last and final stages of Gentile's taxonomy to prepare them for returning to training. We are also continually focusing on the principles already listed. In the following video we are taking the athlete through stage 4D of Gentile's taxonomy. At the end of this video it would be expected that the athlete would be ready to return to training to prepare for competition. So you're obviously familiar with the total tennis pole now from our exercises previously. So now it's going to get a bit more fun, a bit more interactive because you're actually pretty much going to be in a game-like situation, yeah. although we're still in the clinic and whatnot, yeah. but this will get you moving forward so we can get you out back onto the court. Yeah. So cool. today you get a real tennis track awesome. as well. Thank you. So here's what we're going to do is it's pretty much just at very high, so yeah. it's going to go up and down. This will also mean that you can do both forehand and backhand in one set, one series of practice, yeah. um, which is going to be really good for you because obviously throughout the game, you'll be not just in forehand or not just in backhand the whole time yeah. as well. Also, we're going to work just for the first 30 seconds on making sure you've got the correct technique. Movement through that shoulder's correct, so you've got the right movement happening to avoid any other injuries. Yep. And then after that, I'll stop you and we'll work more towards a bit of speed and getting more like game like. No problem. Cool. Alright. Alright, so you have to start and then you're on your own. Yep. So obviously looking at you from afar. Is that okay? Yeah. In this video, we incorporate all the principles previously talked about and would expect that the athlete would almost be at full function, ready to return to training. It was important that in this video, the athlete was completing the skill at full function with correct speed and timing of sequences. At the end of this video, a checklist was also completed to make sure that the athlete was completely ready for returning to training where they will see optimum results.